What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another Tottenham update video for you guys. Uh, there's some transfer news or some not transfer news or whatever you would like to call it. Um, shall we start off with Sergio Regulion? Yeah. Um, there's been some rumours from David Ornstein and also the AS out in um, Spain. And they're saying Tottenham Hotspur are interested in him. Jose Mourinho has personally called the Real Madrid left back to discuss a potential move to the club. <laughs> I'd like to believe that. I would like to believe that because I, I think left I'm not back, sure if Jose got through though. Yeah, he's probably waiting so. on hold. <laughs> uh, we also pretty, apparently he spoke to Castagna as well, and he spoke to this one and that one. He's Jose's a phone, been a busy yeah. guy. Got expensive phone bill this summer, I think, <laughs> Jose. Um, I kind of don't know if it's true. Alice, I don't know. Alistair Gold said we're not interested in a, in a left back, so he's usually kind of like the mouthpiece of the club a lot of ways on transfers. With Alistair, so first guy to break the Doherty transfer. He was. Um, that was out of nowhere. Um, look, I'd like it to be true. I would like it to be true because I think left backs are an area we can definitely upgrade on, and he'll definitely be an upgrade. He's a young Spanish left back who's had a really good season at Sevilla. He was really good against Man United in the Europa League. He's more of a, he's very attacking left back. So. I don't know. I think it's one of those ones where late in the window, if he's available, we might do a deal. But right now, I can't see it happening. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I kind of agree with you. I can't see it happening. But it is one that I would just love to happen. Mm. I mean, he's a quality left back. Showed it for Sevilla last season, all the way to in uh, winning the Europa League as well. Um, and yeah, I just think that it's one that we should be looking to get over the line, especially at a price like twenty million, which yeah, is which is cheap. About someone like him, his age as well. He's fairly young. Uh, I think we should definitely be looking at that. But uh, if apparently Mourinho is happy to go with Davis and Sirkin, so... But he's on the call. He's on the phone to yeah, Sergio. I don't so. know. He's on the phone. <laughs> on the phone. I, I want to see. I want to see receipts. I want to see. I want to see the call logs. <laughs> All right. Let's move on um, to Juan Foyth. There's been some kind of. Uh, rumours about Juan Foy for pe potentially Brighton, Leeds, Real Betis and Villarreal are all interested in Juan Foy. Uh, the club are not keen to lose him permanently apparently um, and therefore plan to loan him out and this is from a publication out in Spain. I mean, I wouldn't mind loaning him out, I guess, get him some regular game time. I think Foyf should probably look to get some game time at his age. I, I, I can't see him getting too many starts next season for Spurs in all, 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 all honesty. I don't think he's a bad player, it's just he's way down the pecking order under Jose. There's so many players ahead of him, so I think a low move would do him good. Even if we get a, for me, if we get a substantial permanent offer, then we should consider it. Um, and use the funds to improve the squad in other areas. But if uh, we really don't want to lose him permanently, then I think a loan deal could suit everyone. Yeah, and it's also these rumours with Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa. They've been they've been around for quite some time now. They just don't won't go away. You think they got some legs to it? Yeah, it makes sense. Obviously, on Pochettino, when Pochettino was manager, they must have spoken about it a lot. There was all, all these rumours he was going to go to Leeds on loan when he, when they were in the Championship. So I think I think Bielsa's. I probably knows a lot about Foyf. However, they did just sign that German defender, mm. so I don't know if they maybe their need for Foyf has gone down a bit. All right, and now let's move on to Danny Rose, and it's very widely reported, especially after the Amazon documentary, that Danny Rose uh, could be leaving Tottenham, and Spurs don't really want to keep a hold of him as it frees up a space in the squad. Um, a couple of days ago, the Evening Standard reported that. Um, Danny Rose wants to leave Tottenham. There's interest from the interest from Premier League clubs are not expected to materialise. Um, the player is open to a foreign transfer. Milan and Lazio previously interested. And since those reports, there's been a report yesterday at Tuto Mercato Sport, and they're saying Cagliari have now uh, got inside and got in touch with Tottenham about taking on Danny Rose. I mean, this guy, mm -hmm. he thought he was up there a year ago, and now the teams that are coming in yeah, for him. Danny wants clubs that are here, but <laughs> who are coming in from over there? Over there. Anything for Milan, Daniel? <laughs> Clearly uh, not. I don't think so, mate. Um, I think, yeah, Rose... The thing with Rose is he just hasn't... Look, he hasn't been at his best for so long now. And I think he has a... Um, I think he's obviously had a great run at the club previously. But, you know, it just shows where he's at the moment. That no one, no one's, he's pretty much, we're pretty much giving him away. No one really wants him. You know, he went on loan to Newcastle for six months. And even then, even they don't want him. Yeah, so, I mean, it tells well a lot, there. doesn't it? And, you know, he gave all that stuff. Oh, I was so happy to go to Newcastle. I was desperate to go. As soon as I saw Newcastle, um, had Jeffo Williams injured, I was, I was going to... 
phone them up straight away. But you can see in the Amazon documentary, it wasn't the case at all, really, was it? Yeah, and also he's also come out with um, when he came back to Tottenham, saying, "Oh, I'd love to play for Tottenham." Yeah, that, one was, last that was interesting. Time. Uh, I'd like to say goodbye in front of the mm. fans. I'd like to play in front of the fans. I think I think that's true. I just don't think he's, I don't think Mourinho is going to give him the chance to. I mm. don't think because I don't think Mourinho is interested anymore. I think he um, the way he conducted himself in the in in the confrontation with Mourinho, I wasn't a massive fan of. But I think he has uh, he has um, grievances which are legitimate. But I think he dealt with it a bit the wrong way. I just think with Danny Rose, the the, the fact of the matter is with him, when he had that big injury for, for, like three years ago, I think he saw Walker move uh, to Man City, triple his wages, and you know move to a big get a big move, win mm. some trophies. Yeah. And I think Rose saw that, and he, and I think when he was coming back from his injury he was too focused on oh, I need to get a better contract I need to get a big move I need to look what my mate just did I need to I need to do these things instead of focusing on getting back to his best he just took his eye off the ball when you're back when you had such a serious injury that rose out for six months your number one thought has to be I need to get back to 100% full mm. fitness and then and then these other things will come and he thought of the other things first and he never ever got back to his best and that's why he's in this situation he's in now you know, he's not even that old. What is he? 30, 31 years old. He's 30, I think, yeah. You know what he's I mean? Not he's old. not that old, you he's know? Not. He's definitely 100% a player in there. Do you think we'll ever see that player again? I don't think so. I think... Even whether it be for another club. I think his priorities are wrong, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, I don't know him. I know he's had a hard time, mental health issues and stuff. But what, what I, from what I can see from how he presents himself... I just feel like his number one priority is not being the best he could be. His number one priority is maximising how much he can get from like other clubs and how much he Do you think that's still deserves. the case? I haven't seen... Well, Because he's been humbled a bit going to Newcastle and then with all the clubs he's been linked with as well. Do you think that's humbled him maybe, a bit? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I think it's possible. I think so, because he gave that interview after he came back, didn't he, of the one you were talking about, um, saying he wanted to play for Spurs again. And he was saying about you know his comments in the paper, he was, he was talking about that as well. And he was saying he, maybe he probably misjudged that. So I think he probably has been humbled a bit. But if Mourinho doesn't want him around, then that's it. It's over. Yeah. All right, and now uh, the final bit of transfer news. Oli Watkins has been moved to Aston Villa in a 25 million uh, move. A uh, big move for him to go oh, yeah, to Aston yeah, Villa. Going to up to 33 million, apparently. Yeah, go, yeah, exactly. It's a big, big move for him uh, after on the back of a brilliant season for Brentford. And what's come out of that is that David Ornstein stated that Spurs did come in for a late bid, but he decided to move to Aston Villa uh, after his, he's got a close relationship with Dean Smith, apparently. Um, what do you make out of that? And what do you make out of the reports coming out that we're not actually, we don't actually have a striker in mind? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, the Ollie Watkins thing, Ornstein said that um, Spurs made a late move, but they could, they they didn't pull push the button because we couldn't get the financials together or something in, in the quick time that Villa did. I don't know something ridiculous like that. Um, I, th- I, like I can't, yeah, I, I can't see Levy sanctioning a thirty million pound bid for Watkins. In my opinion, I think if Watkins was to come to Spurs, it would only because it would be a good price for us, not because we're like pushing, anyone else. Exactly, we're not going to be pushing the boat out for him. So I think the fact that Villa gone for thirty million, probably, I mean, the fact we're getting outbid for players from Aston Villa shows where we are at the moment in terms of bid, um, you know, in our striker search in terms of how we our recruitment really is really frustrating i can understand the fans frustration i think watkins would have been a good signing apparently he would have been happy to come to us because because apparently he uh he said he would have been happy with the lot of game time he would have been getting in europe league and the cups or whatnot he said he would have been confident he would have got a lot of game time if he came to spurs so it's a, it is quite frustrating that if we were interested in him that we've just let him go to villa um so that's a bit annoying because we were so desperate to get someone in and the fact, and the, and, but the, the the more worrying stuff coming from Ornstein is apparently we have no firm attacking targets um, right now going into the season um, to sign. Which, considering the fact that we've pretty much since the first of January, we've been desperate for a striker since Kane got injured, and if not before then, how how have we got no no targets for all that time? I don't Mate, understand. It's an absolute disgrace. It's a disgrace how we don't have targets in mind, you know? And also it's a disgrace how we're putting in last-ditch bids to try still steal these players off people. Like Donny van den Beek, apparently it was the same case with him. I know he's not a striker. Ollie Watkins now, uh, it's happened again with him. Like, why do we not have our targets? And why are we not going for our targets? I know we got Hoi Bieg and Matt Doherty well done. They got their targets there. But we've, like you say, we've been crying out for a striker 
for so long now. Like, how do they not have targets in mind? It's a ridiculous joke. I don't, like, it's, it's a joke. It's nothing short of a joke. I'm every sorry. every few days, there seems to be another striker t- ticked off the list. Wilson's gone now. Watkins gone. Uh, I was I was hoping maybe we could do cheeky bit for Depay, but he's gone to Barca. Uh, I mean, who are we going to get? The I don't only, know. The only one now that. There's only one striker now at the moment that's even been talked about, and that's Habib um, Diallo. You know, Alistair Gold broke that story if, like a week ago now or something like that, and he's the only name that's really touted about. Yeah, and some people are saying Josh King as well. Yeah. Hopefully one comes from left field that we haven't really been linked with and that, that will get us excited. But at the moment, going into the season again with one striker, especially with the start of the season, we have such a congested schedule. I mean... It's really frustrating. It is really, really frustrating. Um, let's get on to that schedule because obviously there's been fixtures moved for TV. Um, if, you, if you guys thought our schedule was mental before, you've got to have a look at it now because it's even more mental. So Everton on the 13th on the Sunday. Then we go to Plovdiv on the 17th. Then we go to Southampton on the 20th. Um, and then we've got Orient or Plymouth on the 22nd, so that's two days later. Then two days after that, we've got Europa League game, and then on the 28th, we play Newcastle. Now, this is where it gets absolutely crazy, because this game against Newcastle was scheduled for the Monday because of TV, and now we have to play a Carabao Cup game, literally, if we beat Orient or Plymouth the next day on the 29th, and then we've got an, another... Um, now then we will have the Europa League tie on the first of two days later, and then two days after that we play Manchester United at Old Trafford on a Saturday. Yeah, we play them on a Saturday. That's I mean, that, that, is, that surely that's got to be moved to a Sunday. But as it joke. stands, it's on a Saturday. It's an absolute joke. Oh, it has to be moved because it's in October, isn't it? Yeah, so I think, I think the, the Man U one surely will be changed to a Sunday. But still, still even if it's ridiculous. on a Sunday, you still know, ridiculous. Newcastle at home, which is a massive game. The day after the Carabao Cup, two days after that, Europa League, and then United. We have seven games in 13 days. It's ridiculous. How are we going to cope with all these all these fixtures and trying to juggle all these games and trying to stay on top in the Premier League and the League Cup? And the we have to get into the Europa League as well. We these three qualifiers are massive. We have we can't take them lightly either because we need them to get into the group stages. Once we get into the group stages, you know maybe you can start taking the games a bit more lightly. But these games you can't because they're one-off ties, so you can't afford to have a bad game. Yeah. So the, it's a really worrying, really this start. It's absolute brutal fixture list. It's I've a never. Great- seen anything really, like I mean, it. It's, um, it's incredible. I know Liverpool had it last season uh, of um, when they were in the Club Winners Cup, whatever it's called, um, well, Club World Cup. Uh, they had that. But that's a, spe- a special circumstance. I know that obviously with the COVID and everything, it's also a circumstance. But I don't know how they can't balance the fixtures out in a better way than this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Why are we playing three bloody qualifiers? I mean, how are we going to cope? We have to see. Is Kane going to play all like, every Europa League and Premier League game? I mean... He has to. I think he has to. And Son. We should have to play the... Und- as you as you've said previously, we're going to have to just play the, und- the youngsters in the Carabao Cup and just hope for the best. Yeah, the way I look at it, under 23s in the Carabao Cup, in the Europa League, I think it's got to be a mixture of subs and starters. And in the league, we've got to go with our strongest team. I think that's the way we're gonna, they're going to do it. And the uh, yeah, the Carabao Cup and no league, it's going to have to be two completely different 11s. You yeah. can't you can't have the same any player playing in both games. Pretty much. Which is it's just so. T- I mean, I can understand if Mourinho's like scratching his head, thinking, "Well, well how am I going to deal with all this?" He's just going to. I think it's, this is one year where I'd say, you know, I don't think I don't think anyone would hold maybe, him against him if we go out the League Cup and third. Maybe round. that's why we're keeping Aurier for so long because we need him for this schedule and then sell him before the transfer window closes. Maybe that probably makes sense. I mean, we need, we do need him for the schedule because of course we do. We, do. Test, we need everyone, every player we need. Mm-hmm. And then we got a bloody another international break in October. Yeah, where England play three games. Three games. Three oh. games. Oh. <laughs> Kane's gonna play all three. Isn't yeah, he? ninety minutes in all three. Of course. Um, oh, it's really frustrating. Hopefully, we can get through the schedule uh, in in a good position in the Premier League and still in the Europa League. Uh, I do. I am starting to get a bit worried for our Europa League campaign. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I'm I just am hoping just, worried because we, we have need to, to get travel. over the line in these games. We have to travel these places just after going. Oh, I don't know how we're going to deal with all of it. We're just going to somehow scrape through. It's going to be difficult. I think we're under. I know they were playing Plovdiv and all these 
you know, no one knows who these teams are, but this is going to be their cup final. Yeah, but I would say that it, I think it's easier to go to these teams without fans because I think that when it's just the players there without the fans, it kind of takes away that intense atmosphere. Yeah. So you're just playing, it's just 11 men on 11 men kind of thing and the better team should should win more but times you, out or not. But you listen to the Plovdiv manager, they're just so motivated to beat yeah, us, aren't they? Yeah, you know what I mean. They can say what they want, but at the, at the end of the day, our team is so superior to theirs. I would have, I'd be more worried if it was fans there and it was a bit of an intense yeah, atmosphere well, how we, it can be in Bulgaria. We better bloody turn up. We, yeah. we, we can't afford to have a bad game. Yeah. We just can't. That's how it is. All right. Well, there you have it. That is today's Tottenham update. We have spoken about Oli Watkins, missing out on Oli Watkins. No striker targets at the moment. Uh, Sergio Regulion, one foy for potentially leaving. Danny Rose potentially leaving. And the mental TV schedule that makes Tottenham play, what is it, seven games in however many days, days? In 13 days. It's absolutely ridiculous. Two, under two weeks. Seven games in under two weeks. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on anything we mentioned in the comment section below. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.